Hi guys, it's Lil Deacon Does Nails. Today I'm going to show you a really easy hand painted butterfly nail art tutorial. So the first thing I'm going to do is take a matte top coat. This one's a no wipe one. I absolutely love it. Super easy to use. Um, I do this because I feel like the matte top coats always give like a paper sort of feel. So I feel like doing nail art is a lot easier on top of a matte top coat. Um, obviously I apply like a top coat on top of acrylic or whatever that I'm working on when doing an actual client but for this just the press on. I'm just curing that for a minute. So now I'm just taking my candy coat paint pots. I find these perfect for nail art. These are the colours that they are. Um, I absolutely love them. The only downside to these pots is obviously they're not colour coordinated so you have to sort of work out the coats and swatch them yourself but it's not too much of a problem, it's just obviously a little bit frustrating. So I'm going to be using my Glitter Bells Fine Detailer brush. I can't remember the millimetres of this, it is the medium one though. I'll also be using my Candy Coat Flat Brush just to mix the paint pots because after a while the oil sort of settles on top of the paint pots so I like to make sure that they're mixed and properly pigmented. I'm just going to start the butterfly outline now. So I always do a bigger wing at the top and then a smaller wing at the bottom. And if you can look very closely, you'll see that I'm doing that. It's very hard to see on this recording. I am trying to find an easier way of showing you tutorials and stuff like that. But for the purposes of this, I always do a bigger wing at the top and a smaller wing at the bottom. And these can be any shapes. It doesn't matter. The simpler, the better the easier they are to do. So I always just start with just a nice round wing at the top and a nice pointed wing at the bottom. I will just add in here that I always do start with the darker colour of the two um, to do the outline, just because I find that it creates more like a butterfly effect if the lighter colour is sort of in the, in the middle, if that makes sense. You can see here that I have the bigger wing at the top and the smaller wing at the bottom. Then I just need to mirror that. It really does not need to be perfect on the other side. You know, sometimes you can sort of get away with it being slightly different because obviously as a butterfly is flying, the wings can sort of change shape, if that makes sense, just because of the angles and stuff like that. So really don't overthink it too much. Just try to get it as even as possible. I do thin lines on one side and then thick lines on the other. I don't know why, but that's just what happens. But it doesn't matter anyways, because we're going to create a thicker line on that thin side anyways. In the next step, I'll show you. Now you're going to start creating a thicker outline around that butterfly that you've just drawn or inside it if that makes sense just to add some more dimension so that we can blend the next colour into it. So this is what it should be looking like. Now it's really important you don't cure it right now because you're going to bring in that second colour and apply it right where you haven't added any paint yet. But also as you're applying this in this area, you're going to start dragging it into that purple, into that darker colour to sort of create a little bit of a blend in there so it's not just block colours. This is where you'll start to see the butterfly come to life a little bit. I really get excited about these parts. You can obviously add in as many colours as you want if you want to add in two, three, four. It's absolutely fine. I just genuinely stick to two or three. And I genuinely stick to shades that are sort of similar like greens, yellows, whites or just anything sort of like that where you can sort of blend it without it being ridiculous. Like I wouldn't pick black and then white. Do you know what I mean? But it's completely up to you. You decide what colours you want and how you want it blended.
Now I'm just going to cure this for 60 seconds. Now that that's fully cured, I'm just now going to outline that shape in black. This is shade 002 in Candy Coat Paint Pots. Now with me, I genuinely outline the whole of the butterfly and then I go in and add some lines and definitions and stuff like that. Now it's completely up to you whether you want to do that. You could just decide that the outline just looks good as it is. But I tend to separate the wings at this point. So now that that's done, you're just going to add in the body of the butterfly. I just do a curved line down the middle. Then you're going to add in the antennas. I just literally do two antennas in sort of a curved shape, um, but I don't connect them to the body of the butterfly. So this is what it's looking like now. Um, I now just go in with the black and I just add some little lines just for a bit of dimension. So now I'm just going to cure that for about 30 seconds and then we're ready for the final step. So now I'm going to use my candy coat paint pot in the shade 001. I'm going to be adding in just some little tiny white details like little dots um, on the corners of the wings or just little uh, white swooshes next to the black swooshes. Just little things like that that will really make the butterfly pop. I genuinely don't go in with too much white but the little bits that I do go in are always very, very effective. So I definitely recommend using a tiny bit of white. And that's the finished result. Just cure and you're ready to go. Thank you for watching. Bye.